Call right now. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show. On the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What's happening? Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We have brought the show today to the Fairbanks Ranch Country Club because our man Ernie Hahn, who will be joining us coming up shortly, Ernie Hahn is having his sixth annual Caddy Hack Golf Tournament that benefits an organization called Boys to Men. For those of you that have been listening for a long time, you know that we've been involved with Boys to Men, mostly because we had a listener for a really long time. He's still a listener, by the way. Sending shout-outs to my man, Anthony. Uh, I don't? Not Anthony. I okay. Don't. Anthony Hutchins. Do you know Anthony? I do not. Say again? I do not. Yes, you do. Okay, I do. Yes, you do. Oh, he then I do. To, he used, I used, his nickname on the show used to be ex-con Anthony. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped yeah. calling him that out of respect for him. He didn't say anything to me. He wasn't like, hey, would you mind not calling me that anymore? It was cute and funny when he was first released from jail. Um, but all these years later, he is such a model citizen, such, such a great example to these young men. And it was Anthony who brought us to Boys to Men. Anthony has since departed the organization. He's gone on to do his own thing. Um, but it was Anthony who brought us to Boys to Men. And um, so for that, I'm grateful. And so, Anthony, I know you're out there listening today or watching on YouTube. We appreciate you, pal. But anyway, um, years ago, Anthony brought us to this organization. We've been out here doing this golf tournament. This is probably the fourth of the six years. There were the two years that we couldn't pull it off necessarily. But here we are. So it is Monday afternoon. It's August 27. We've moved to Seven Mile Casino Studios out here to the Fairbanks Ranch Country Club, and we're going to have a really great show today. Ernie Hahn will join us coming up. It's nice to have Bill Hagen stop by in the opening segment. I asked him to come by today. He did. Uh, Brad DeLuiso, the former kicker of the New York Giants, who's a San Diego native and played his college ball at UCLA, stopped by for a second. Now here comes the San Diego Gull who's walking by. Hi, Gull. There he is. Hi, Gull. How you doing, man? Good to see you, buddy. All right. Those like ice. Yeah. All right. All right. So Brown, talk yeah, to me. Man. Tell me. Uh, tell me. I asked Alex about the weekend. He was talking about his cousin and this whole event he was at, and then things started to happen here, which is the fun of it. Mm -hmm. What's going on with you? Listen, I got to tell y'all something about these events. I like these events, especially when we're participating in this fashion, because I can see everything. As much as there's a bunch of old dudes here just running around, you know drunk slapping golf balls just being old and white huh right you know just, just privilege it. it's cool they bring a lot of women not it, for entertainment purposes what does that mean advertising purposes what do you mean by that as uh let me let's say uh trust me vodkas here okay, okay. and right. as an example they would hire a couple ladies to hand out trust me yep there are a lot of those here because like you said there's every top restaurant here they brought somebody to hand out the food. Well, I mean, uh, these are like what I would call promotional models. Yeah, that's a, there you go. You know? There you go. There's a lot of them here. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them. Well, this is a smart thing to do. When you have an event Brilliant with viewers. a whole bunch of dudes and you're trying to get some attention on your product, whether yeah. it's a vodka company or a seltzer company or a restaurant, yeah, yeah. bring hot chicks. See-through shirt company. There's a couple of those here. It's been good. You're back to it. You're missing out. No, I am missing everything. You're missing Everything's out. behind me, you're and I'm missing out. everything. You, on the other hand, you're, you're getting to see it all. Alex, you're missing it all, too, but we need you at home base. Yeah, I feel good here. You you like it there? Yeah, solid. Yeah, yeah you're happy at home, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. He feels comfortable marrying people and working from home. Yeah, I have a packed house again, too, though. So my, today probably would have been a good day to be out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, so who, wait, so when the house is packed, who's cooking? Mar's mom is here cooking. She cooked breakfast okay. this morning. She probably got really? lunch ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of Mar's sisters tested right positive, so she's isolating, and the rest of the family's here. I'll tell you this right now. These guys right here, they are making burgers. Browner, when these things are done, we're having one of these. We got to ask them what's in it. Get them on the show. Yeah. I don't know, man. They, these things are – they are good looking. Oh, they're already ready to go. They got – wow, that's, that's – hey, chef, what are we making on those burgers? Oh, you see this? See uh oh, this? chef's bringing him. He already know what time it is. He does know what time it is. Chef knows. What's he cooking on? <laughs> what? What'd you say? What's he cooking it, it, on? Yeah, a grill. Obviously, yeah, what, but what kind? Big green egg. A 
Napoleon. Oh man, you know, you listen, listen. You asking the wrong person, brother. Yeah. I don't know. Can we turn that camera so we can kind of add some color, or can we not turn that add camera? Add some color? What you mean? Well, you know, like a little color commentary to oh, what's going oh, on around oh, here. Oh, you meant something else? You know, no, that's not what I meant. All right, look at this. Hey, Brown's about to turn a camera, and we're gonna see what's going on here. Alex, can you see that? Uh, look at the chef. Way to go, chef. It's like a blackstone or something like that. Like a griddle. Is that who? what that is? I don't know. My man is cooking it up, though, and he got a big old thing of burgers happening right now. Fire. Yeah. All right. We going to put that burgers all up on the junk. Yeah, man. He's cooking on that junk. He's going to run a couple of them junks over here, man. We're yeah. going to get on in there. Yeah, some of them junks yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah. get them yeah. junks over there. Catch a little bit of muscle on that junk. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex, can you put all four of us on the screen at the same time? Me, Browner, you, and the chef cooking all up on that junk? Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Chef, you're on the show, man. Say hello to everybody. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. Hey, All right. Monarch Del Mar. Monarch Del Mar. I was, I was oh, dude, I, I love like, Monarch, dude. I was, I Shout was out there. to the, the Sunset Poem. The what? Yes. The, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sunset Toast? Every every sunset, they do a toast, and they read a poem out of the book. Oh. Listen, it, if you are in Del Mar, I'm going to give a free plug here. If you're in Del Mar. Yeah. Del Mar Plaza. It's 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 right across the street from. Um, it's in the plaza in 15th Street. The right across from Le Yeah. Dude, there's no better place to be when the sun goes down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'll tell you, it's funny. I was I was there yesterday. I was thinking to myself, all these years, all these different restaurants have gone in there, and none of them have succeeded. This until one will. These guys. Until these guys. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. All right, listen. We are uh, here today on a Monday afternoon. That is about, that's about as West Coast elite I'll get. Oh, really? That's, oh, yeah. that's some coastal elite right there. Yeah, that's why I drink most of my espresso martinis. Oh, really? Man. I had one this weekend for you. Nice! I had an espresso martini. Think? I liked it. It wasn't great, great. It wasn't like the best one. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Sorry, what, are you what are you giggling at? <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, it was a right. yeah, It was okay. an right espresso martini. All right. You know? So, all right, listen. Me and Browner are here at Fairbanks Ranch Country Club. Ernie Hahn's going to stop by coming up soon. That's why we came out here. Um, every restaurant in town is here. I think they've got over 200 golfers. Ernie will tell us the exact numbers coming up shortly. And uh, and we got a great show here this afternoon. So let's do this. While we have time, because I don't know who's going to be stopping by and how this is all going to go down. Wait a second. Now we're – oh, look at this. Hold on. The chef is coming in now. Hold on. Chef. All right. He's handing off burgers. Chef is handing off burgers now. All right, stand right there. Chef, just sit spend a minute here with us. Walk away like that. Yeah, we we I'm not walking away. I'm, we were just I'm saying, good. I was at Monarch yesterday. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, this man gets coastal lead. He comes up yeah. to Monarch. That's why. That's why I like to meet my uh, my crowd of uh, entertainment ladies. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chef, what is your name, sir? My name is Craig Jimenez. Come right up to that yeah. mic. My name's Craig Jimenez, uh, executive chef for Monarch Ocean Pub, uh, and you guys have our happy hour burgers so monday through friday uh four to six we do a six dollar uh flat top uh dirty flat top smash ooey gooey american cheese and onions and uh, mustard grill brioche bun it's uh it looks well, pretty fire brown how is it this man, is a man who's a kind of sore. Gonna, as the great Vince glenn would say man <laughs> <laughs> you like that huh fantastic that's a tasty burger oh my get your son wow How'd you come up with this? Wait, how'd you get that job? <laughs> you look how'd pretty you get, young for people, a, how'd you get you that job? You look young for a chef, brother. <laughs> I'm a ninja. I'm a ninja. Okay. Um, so, uh, long story short, this is actually a classic take um, on a like a grocery style burger. Uh, so, um, this is inspired from an Oklahoma style burger. Uh, so, you press the onions into the ground beef when you're cooking it and you get that all those caramelized bits um the american cheese it just all fuses together and it's just amazing bite so um, we're making people hungry the, yeah <laughs> people who are listening hope right so. now hope people so. who are watching on youtube people who are watching on tv monarch yes. for happy hour yeah right on yes please come through chef, you guys enjoy great to see you man absolutely thanks for having Thank me i'm you. gonna jump back on go uh, back to work on a round two let me know all right my right, man chef. appreciate right. you man all right all right alex Mm. I know uh, you got a full house, and I know you got Mars mom there cooking. Yeah. But, uh, hmm, this is a tasty burger. That is a great burger. Look at Browner. Browner's just now, he's all up in that burger. 
You guys are doing my favorite thing that I know listeners love. <laughs> not only do we have care? not only do we have one guy doing, we have both of you guys doing it. It's disgusting. <laughs> it is, it is can disgusting. you just get away from the mic? Like just get away. It's not that hard to chew off mic. <laughs> it's so gross. It is a beating. It's so gross. <laughs> I almost muted right, you guys this. in my headphones. All right, let me do this. <laughs> let me let me do this while we have the time. Start us off with this. Let's talk a few a few stories that we want to get to today, but we never really know how it's going to go down when we're doing a live appearance like this. Um, let's start off with the Padres. I know we'll ask Ernie about the Padres because Ernie's Ernie's there. He's up close and personal, right behind home plate, and he'll have some some things to say about it. This past weekend, are we impressed? I mean, are we? Where where is the Padre fan base attitude right now? Are you? Are you thinking that they're coming out of it? Are you are you thinking that they still got some big problems? Closer's a huge problem, but all of a sudden, some of the hitters are coming around a little bit. But I say it like that, and they win these two games, these last two games, two to one. Smack you in the face for the first two games? That's not good. And then winning these last two games, okay, you even it up. But as my man Browner has said all season long, you're supposed to win series against inferior teams. you got to win three out of four. You can't be splitting against a team like the Washington Nationals. So, Grande, I'll throw it over to you. What did you think about this past weekend? I didn't catch a lot of it, but it's concerning the, of how you, I guess in theory, on paper, you get a much better roster. You get a much better lineup. And you're playing as bad as you were before you even got them. That, to me, makes absolutely no sense. And the only way I could say it is that's so San Diego. I mean, how does Josh Bell come here until the last two games and forget how to hit completely? How does Josh Hader come here and completely forget how to pitch? No, that's the problem. Like, completely forget. Like, Juan Soto is coming here, and, yeah, he's on base all the time. But he's got two RBIs? Three RBIs? You know, so it's, it, it, it is literally one man. Manny Machado, that is providing most of the offense. There was a, and I, and I didn't, I didn't save it, so I couldn't find it today. But I saw it like on Saturday before the game. There is a stat of the number. Remember we talked about earlier this season. How much percentage is the offense contributed of the Angels from Otani and Trout? And it was like forty percent of the Angels' yeah. offense was from those two. Like right. Manny Machado is the same thing. Manny Machado is literally like thirty percent of the Padres' offense because everybody else is dog poop. And it's just concerning because this is the Nationals. Patrick Corbin is literally the worst pitcher in baseball and you got one run off him. It's very concerning. I don't know how you can look at this team and, and not be concerned. I, I would say the only thing, because again, I'm all about baseball and, and, and letting it work itself out. What I will tell you is the only part that has me at the edge of my seat is what's wrong with Josh Hader because I thought that door had been closed and we don't have to worry about that anymore. He's as bad as the guy who left. <laughs> oh, so, and now they're doing the same thing. Bob Melvin literally said, we're going closer by committee. So it's like, so what? Already? Like we're giving up on the guy already? So yeah, At this point, you can't afford to lose well, more games because but, of but, that. But think about this. You say but giving you, up on this guy already, but think about this. You ready? Just to compare it. When you look at the Dodgers as an example, Okay, and you look at their closer, Craig Kimbrell. Dodger fans are losing their minds because they think he sucks. That's fine. He may suck. Right. Okay. But the difference is when you've got whatever the lead is right now, 16 games, 17 games, 18 games. I don't even know because I'm I've stopped looking at the standings. I stopped looking at the NL West standings because they don't matter anymore. Because there's nothing the Padres can win every game from now till the end of the season and still not win the division. So if you're the Dodgers, you have time and space to see if your closer can work it out. Mm -hmm. When you're the Padres, you're caught in the middle of a, of a race. Alex, you can put this up on the screen. Between the Padres, the Phillies, and the Brewers in particular, you're in the middle of something here, and not, none of these teams, Padres are 5-5 five and five in their last 10. Both other teams, Philadelphia and, and Milwaukee, are 4-6. Are and six. By the way, Philadelphia was playing against the Mets, so they're, you know, they're, they're in the middle of a playoff race as well. So and The Brewers are playing the Dodgers, but apparently that didn't mean anything to them because they beat them somehow. Yeah. So um, I'll just say this, like the Padres do not have the luxury of letting Josh Hader kind of work it out. No. Like the Dodgers have the luxury right. of letting a guy like Craig Kimball. They, Kimball work they it would out. have, they would have the luxury of letting Hader work it out. If their offense could provide some sort of 
anything. You know, just bring them in with a lead. Every game is close. Every, every game. Except one exception in Miami. Other than that, every game has been close. Every game has been two to three, two to one. You know, it's it's just like, where is this potent offense that is supposed to be here? Like, you know, all of my wrath last year was on A.J. Preller, but what more do you want the guy to do at this point? It's like you bring in this this 23-year-old MVP finalist. He's not performing to the levels that he should be. The rest of the, of the roster is not doing it as well. I, I don't know, man. It is, it is, and it's, you know, if they played the Dodgers, if they played the Mets and they looked like this, I would understand. But they're playing the Marlins and the Nationals. But they beat the Mets. They haven't been successful against the Dodgers this year, but they beat the Mets. That's yeah. the maddening part about it. And they beat the Mets before the trade. So this, this is the part about baseball where I have to tell my relax let it play itself out more than anything and not to get too up, not to get too down, especially with this team, because the down can be way, way down and the up won't be that high up. Just trying to put all that together about the downs and the ups. I just wanted to make sure I got all that clear. He was, he was doing something on his computer. Y'all y'all yeah. could see him. Who? Mm-hmm. See? So um, I do want to just take one minute here in the middle of this whole conversation to just send a shout out to my man, Gary Cooper, Mount Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, because Gary this past weekend had that open house for that house that was up in like the Rancho Bernardo Forest Ranch area. And it was listed at 1.9 and change. Seemed like it was really listed to sell six bedrooms, four bathrooms, the whole deal. Go on to his website, mountaintrustrealty.com, because he's got a lot of other listings that may be in your price range or more in your price range. Um, and, And listen, you need any advice buying, selling a house or financing, refinancing, that's our guy, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299 for Gary Cooper. All right, so, Alex, speaking of hater, you put this up on the screen. What, how badly things have gone since Josh Hader got to the Padres. Go for it. Five appearances, a 16.20 ERA, only four strikeouts, five walks, one blown save, one loss. The Padres, if he's appeared in the game, they're two and three. Yeah, I, I really didn't look at Josh Hader. In other words, like I knew the name and where he was coming from and the reputation, but I didn't really, really do a deep dive, and I still haven't gone deep, deep. <laughs> but I read something this past weekend that was um, talking about how Hader is struggling here in San Diego, but maybe it shouldn't be as big of a surprise because it's not like he came to the Padres on fire from Milwaukee. Right. You know, like he kind of came in sort of struggling. struggling. Yeah. Right. yeah. But it was struggles, a short struggle. It wasn't it was, like our guy was struggling. Right. It was like two games, I think. Two or th- maybe three games. And then he seemed to like right the ship. But I guess, you know, anytime, and we should have known this by now, anytime a team is willing to let go of an all-star that's competing yeah. for a wild card spot or a playoff spot, it's like, why? What? Yeah. What's there? What do you know we don't know? What do you know, know what, what that we don't know? Issue? Like Blake right. Snell. What, what do you know <laughs> that we don't know, Tampa? You know, what Chicago, what do you know about you, Darvish, that we don't know? I mean, you's been, you's been very good. But you know what I mean? Like, why is, why is Milwaukee in the middle of a postseason push letting their all-star closer go when the fans were upset? The owner had to put out a statement saying – this is what we're doing. You know, it, it, it wasn't like Milwaukee was like, yeah, we're going to get rid of Hater. Everybody was like, why are we getting rid of Hater? So questionable, questionable. I'm going to turn around for a second because uh, I hear this woman singing on the Wonder Bus behind us. And um, I saw my friend April from April and the Funk Junkies walking around. Oh. And I, I didn't know if that was them playing or not. But they're, I don't, these guys are just playing right behind us. So. For anybody that's just joining us on radio, we're at the Fairbanks Ranch Country Club right now. Ernie Hahn, our longtime great friend and huge supporter of the show, is having his sixth annual Caddy Hat Golf Tournament to benefit an organization called Boys to Men. Uh, two weeks ago, we were out supporting uh, pro kids and that organization that helps at-risk youth by pulling them off the streets, putting them on a golf course, putting them into classrooms, and doing what they can do to help those kids. This is an organization somewhat similar the difference is, is that they're not using golf. They're using real dudes who've been in real trouble in their lives to mentor these at-risk kids, and it's a, it's a great program. And I know a lot of schools around San Diego want this program in their schools, and that's why Ernie's out here today raising hundreds of thousands of dollars 
to put more programs in more schools around the county that need it, that want it. So, How much are they going to get to today? They'll raise a couple hundred grand, I'm sure. We'll, we'll, Ernie will join us here in the next few minutes, and we'll find out exactly how many golfers he's got out here, how much money he plans on raising. I'm sure he'll want to talk about the Padres. Knowing him, he'll want to talk about the Chargers. Uh, I definitely would love for us to get into Wonderfront. Just real quick. Um, yeah, I want to get into Wonderfront. You know, we're going to have to get into Wonderfront. Like, into sure. it. Right, into it. I will just say this. This past weekend, I had um, – I went to a high school football game on Friday night. High school football. Why are you still going to high school football games? Just to be part of a community, you know, like where my kids went to school and where I still have one that goes to school. And so it's just a community kind of thing. Who played? Uh, Tory Pines played against a team called Ayala. I don't know. I think they're from Chino Hills. Okay. They came down here and they were they they wrecked. Got the business? They took care of some business. The Ayala dudes. But uh, it's so fun. Like, high school football's back. And I've always been somebody who doesn't like preseason NFL football. And yet, I found myself just kind of following along a little bit to see what's going on. Anybody see what happened with the Chargers and the Cowboys? No, what happened? Oh, you didn't? Oh, that's no. good. I'm glad you didn't because that tells me that you're like me usually. You're not watching preseason football. Doesn't count. Yeah. All right, we'll talk some, we'll talk some football. I, and the reason I want to talk about football is because even San Diego State, they, they really went through a walkthrough this weekend, not just with the team, but with the stadium as well. And I want to get to that. So stick around. We're at the Fairbanks Ranch Club. Ernie Hahn, the host will join us next. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio and your view featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Rome comes home. Yes, I said it. You can now catch the Jim Rome Show Monday through Friday, noon until 3 p.m. on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Back to San Diego, where it all started, on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Let's welcome back to Main Street Living tax attorney Adam Brewer. Adam, thanks so much for joining us again. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Now, it might seem weird that we're having you on because it's not necessarily tax season right now, but what are some things that viewers can do to get ahead of next tax season? Yeah, you're right. I apologize. I think most people would prefer to just forget about taxes for this summer. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, if you have some downtime, uh, always a good opportunity to kind of get ahead for next season. So um, really what I'm preaching is... Um, you know, just become more knowledgeable about your taxes. You know, everyone come tax season can benefit from having a little more knowledge and uh, just being a little bit less stressed about the whole process of, of getting their taxes filed and getting them paid. You know, all this information is available online, um, but it's really a mess. So it just gets back to my first point, you know, just start with your own taxes. And then if you need to, to you know, dig in on one or two issues, you know, it's just a Google search away. Gotcha. Google search away. Now, you know, uh, let's just say someone is interested, like Danielle is interested in becoming more knowledgeable about her taxes. Like how should someone like her get started? Yeah. So Danielle, you're interested. You should start with, <laughs> you know, your last year's tax return. So I'd say get out your last year's return uh, form 1040s, you know, going to be the first page there um, and really look and see what lines are populated. And then, you know, make sure you understand those roles. So if you have uh, dividend income and you see, you know, what's a qualified dividend, you know, go in and figure it out. Likewise, if you see anything that's missing. So, you know, a lot of taxpayers now are paying a ton in student loan interest. Um, and then they look at their tax return and they go like, well, that's limited to 2,500 bucks. Um, you know, that would be a role that you'd want to dig in and, and really figure out how it impacts uh your your actual tax return uh yeah when in doubt save for retirement um it's either you know for most taxpayers it's either going to save you money today uh tax wise or it's going to help you reduce your tax burden in the future awesome so important thank you thank you so much adam we appreciate you yeah thank you This 
best is Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Hey, great friends. What is going on? It is Monday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew, and we are going for it today, man. We are going to try for another time to do a remote broadcast from outside of our respective studios, where, by the way, I promise you, it's a whole lot easier. It's a whole lot more comfortable. But like so many people have suggested to us, including a shout out to my man, Joe Rigby, who has said to me over and over again, it is time for the show to get back out and about doing things back out in the community. So today, here we are. We're broadcasting on the airwaves of 1090. We're streaming all over YouTube. We're going to be on every audio podcast platform. You guys already know that. And tonight we'll be on television on Channel 4 San Diego as our home base with Cox Your View. But today we come out to this golf tournament that, for those of you who are longtime listeners, we used to broadcast out here all the time when we were just on radio. And it was seemingly somewhat easier because it was just audio, whereas now we've got the video component to everything that we do. But this golf tournament, I feel like we had a big part in all of this. It was Ernie's idea for the golf event, but it was us who made the introduction to Boys to Men, which is this mentoring organization for at-risk youth young men who really, you know, are on the verge of like, you know, going into like a life of crime and incarceration. And these guys who've already been in those situations mentor these young kids and get them all together and, and you know, really do a great job to, to get these kids off the streets and turn them into, you know, really good young people. So anyway, we're here. Browner just sat down. Ernie Hans coming over. E, we're on. We're on right now. So come sit down because I know we don't have that much time with you. Here comes the host of our event. Browner's here. Grande, let me just first say hello to you, Alex. How are you, man? It's Monday afternoon. How you doing? I'm doing great. Excited okay. to be here. Excited to yeah. be back. All right. Me too. Yeah. Uh, Browner, how are we feeling today, pal? We out here. You know how I get when we out here doing this. We out here doing it. Huh? We out here doing it. So I'm always focused on other things. So. Okay. I know you are. You are doing a phenomenal job today. Now, turning my attentions to this young fella right here, the captain today of the Caddy Hack for the sixth straight year, Ernesto Hahn is in the house. Ernie? This well, is, this is us a, being here. I want you to know, us being here right now is 1,000% your fault. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> because if it wasn't for a couple of years ago, Alex, when was it? A couple of years ago yeah. when you announced Wonderfront yeah. and we did that broadcast yeah. down at wherever we were in downtown Sidebar. Sand, sidebar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you Dude, were there live covering it. We did not know that it could be done back then. And even today, we're not really sure that it can be done. Right. But, brother, we are here for one reason, and I'm going to tell you what that is. Because while things change in the world, especially in the world of San Diego sports, relationships remain constant. Amen. You feel Thank me on that? Thank you very much. Right? I mean, that means more than anything to me. I mean, that's what it's about, dude. Yeah. I mean, 1090 had its reign for years, and you ran the sports arena forever, yeah. and we collaborated and worked together all the time, sure did. and you're going on to bigger and better things. We are, we are obviously as well. Yep. And but, dude, it's us, man. It's it's us. It means more than you uh, know. Uh, it's been a tough year in some ways, and at the same time, great learning year. And uh, we find ourselves now, six years later, Caddy Hack Six. I mean, pretty amazing. And you've been here since the get go and covered it. I remember you and Billy Ray there out at Morgan Run, and we're at. Uh, Fairbanks Ranch, we have 27 holes here. Uh, I mean, just look at all the food and beverage. We have 224 golfers. Amazing. Like, it's it's all 27 holes have eight people on it. It's sold Damn. out, and it's all all going to Boys to Men charity, which uh, makes me feel great. Well, let's, let's start off with Boys to Men. I think I don't want to bury the lead here. Yeah. So I was saying right before you got here, I feel really good about this because I feel like over the years, whether it's the 100 Wave Challenge, this golf event, the relationship that we as a show have had with boys to men yeah. and now your relationship with, I, I just, I feel so good about this organization is really what I'm getting at. What, what motivates you to want to do this for them? Well, when I learned about it from Joe, probably seven years ago, two motivations, one, um, I was part of the century club. Uh, I was on the board of directors there. I've been on the century club for 20 plus years and I uh, was uh, on the board getting ready to go into the executive board and, and at some point, somebody told me that I um, 
wasn't good enough to be part of the executive board, that I wasn't getting voted through, um, which was shocking in a lot of ways to me. It wasn't shocking when I considered who it came from and kind of their uh, agendas or whatever it was. It had nothing to do with Marty or any of the team there. It was just, it was the board itself. Um, but I found out a couple of things. One, when people, and I, I know you're the same way, when people tell us what we can't do, oh, dude. that's the best medicine for me to actually try to really go out and just kick ass. Don't and, tell me I can't. Yeah. Cause once you tell me I can't, then I got to prove you wrong. Yeah. And that's, I, I talked to Joe. He told me about boys to men. I told him that we put on, let's do this golf event. Let me give the time I was giving to the century club, to something else where we could turn the needle. And sure enough, that's what we did. And Joe's like, well, we made like 10 grand on one of the golf tournaments. I said, no, this is going to be different. Here we are six years later, we'll have 22 live bands out on course, over 20 food and beverage companies that are here, 224 golfers, uh, the Wonder Bus. And it's as much fun as you can have playing golf. And we'll raise, it looks like we're gonna be close to $400,000 wow. this year for Boys wow. and Men, which now wow. allows us, wow. you know, for you and John, it allows us to add probably another 10 schools, keep all the schools involved. There's, there are. 20 or 30 schools that want to have this program and they don't have the funding. And so we're, we're going to keep doing this until we can keep, you know, get every school that wants to have boys and men so they can have it. Wow. That's great. Ernie Hahn is here. Browner and I are here. Alex is back at home base. We are uh, out today at the Fairbanks Ranch country club trying to do this again. And so far, Brown, it looks like we're so far so good. Look, man, don't bring nothing up. Just keep talking. Like, you know, <laughs> talk like everything is, Talk like we the mothership, put it like that. <laughs> Let's keep going. So, Ihan, yeah. um, I mentioned this from the beginning. You know, the first time we ever tried to do something like this was when you were announcing Wonderfront. Yeah. And I know we're, we're here today to talk about boys to men, and we're yeah. here today to talk about the Caddy Hack. But just yeah. give us a brief update, because I know I was talking to my girlfriend this weekend, and she was telling me, I think, maybe two-day tickets are already sold out. So, just for every – because let me just say one thing. If it's not for you, and I'm going to hype you up because you're my man, and I don't want to embarrass you, but I'm going to hype you up. If it's not for you, there is no Wonderfront. There is no downtown concert series at the Embarcadero. It's your name, your relationships, your history in San Diego, your passion for music, your ability to, to know everybody in the industry, to get them down here. You guys are going to have the biggest and best. And look, it's only the second one because we've missed the last because of, of, of COVID. But you guys are about to put on a monster show. My kids are all coming home before Thanksgiving because they're like, Dad, we have to come home for Wonderfront yeah. from college. So just give us a little bit about what's going on there. Well, it's a, it's a monster, obviously. And uh, the market's been tough uh, during COVID. And then you come back in and you're on sale. And um, so there's a lot going on. Uh, you know, I'm not as involved with the day-to-day -day as I used to be. My partner that, uh, that I found initially, Paul Thornton, uh, who is the CEO of the festival is really handling all the day-to-day -day stuff. Dream Han and our crew is really handling all the sponsorships, the partnerships. I turn over all the relationships, all the stuff that I have and the juice that I have in this market, which is a lot. And it's a lot of good stuff. I love it when a person says they have a lot of juice. Yeah. Like when you that's, know you have juice. Listen, you can yeah. say, yeah. you have juice. Yeah. I just call it. That's if, the way it is. You like saying you, you know, meant it made at this point. You know what? Is it, is it? Yeah, I'm squeezing the juice after 30 some years. If you don't have juice, I won't cuss. But if you don't have juice, you should find somewhere else to go to have juice. Yeah, I'm gonna call uh, you Minute Maid from yeah. now on. I ain't call you Ernie Hunt. I'm gonna call you Minute Maid. I knew OJ. Set out the Minute Maid, baby. All right. Well, I like I like uh, extra pulp. Hey, 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 me too. <laughs> extra pulp. Me too. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, excited. It's it's uh, so he's handling the day to day. Uh, when when I see, you know, it's gonna sound like when I see those posts and all that stuff, he's handling all that kind of stuff. We got our our head down. I've been really busy on this for the last three weeks, as you can imagine, putting on a golf tournament for two hundred and twenty four golfers and all of these vendors and having you know people like you and others come out and support it. It means everything in the end. And um, so super excited, right? Obviously, Kings of Leon. Zach Brown Band, uh, Gwen Stefani, Cage the Elephant, and, you know, just go on and on and on and on. It's 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 pretty crazy when you think about it. So, well, I'm really excited about it. In fact, it's just so funny. Somebody just said to me yesterday they love Cage the Elephant, and they said they never seem to play here. And I said, well, guess what? They're playing at Wonderfront in November. We'll see you down there. Yeah. I'm like a walking freaking ambassador. <laughs> well, you are, you are, and I appreciate that. And you've been trying to get us together and. You know, Billy and I had that conversation too. So uh, that's going to happen right after this. And 
yeah, but you're, you know, you're 90 days out. So it's, it's uh, make or break time on a lot of different things. These are, these are huge endeavors. I, I, I think my, my respect goes out to everybody that's done this before. We obviously did it the first year. It is, um, you're creating a small city within a city. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, like, uh, it almost killed me the first year. I'm not sure why we're doing it again. Other than <laughs> I, I, we love it. I mean, I know why we're doing it. Yeah. It's so damn hard that, uh, there are easier things to do. I tell people, don't do it, but you find yourself just like you guys right now are really good at your craft and what you do. This is where you belong, where you should be doing cool things. It's, it's, it's the space I belong after these years. I think wanting a challenge, wanting a challenge is something that you know is difficult because it looked fantastic. Thank the first, you. The first year was ran. That. The distance to walk wasn't bad. The hearing one stage to the next wasn't bad at all. So it was a great event. It was enough room that you could still walk around and, and and get air and have a good time. And so I thought everything was fantastic. So when you speak of that challenge, is this the hardest thing that you're doing these days? Oh, Are yeah. you talking about the golf tournament? Are you talking no, about no. Wonderfront? Oh, this is easy. He could do this in his sleep. I'm speaking of Wonderfront. Is yeah, that no, is that the hardest I, thing you're yeah, doing I just, these days? I think they always have like the hardest jobs to do, period. I think like president of the United States is always like one. And then right behind that is like, festival promoter like, like it's, and it's and it's like it should be like one and one a and then everybody else is a dis it's it's john it's so ridiculously hard on so many levels and then by the way you've got to go out and guarantee millions and millions of dollars of bands and guess what whether one person comes three thousand people come doesn't matter they get paid and so it ain't like hey if we do ten thousand scott we're gonna pay you this year You're like uh no we get paid as they should yeah but so then it gets into marketing all the other things that are uh subjective that, and what you have to do and so it, it it's uh it's amazing i do it as we talked about i do it uh and, and wanted to do it for the city i just like we lost the charter too i just i want you to think of this festival as one of your home teams that you love and, are, and you support you want to be that, Listen, no that's, doubt that's all i've really right. ever wanted to do. if, if comic-con is a mainstay yeah then Wonderfront should be also on the calendar of events. And by the way, so should this golf tournament, because unlike a regular charitable golf tournament, which are all fantastic, this one's a massive event. When you have 224 golfers, that's a lot of people. They're going to be out here a long time. Well, when they're out there for a long time, how do you keep them entertained? Otherwise, they're standing around, you know, just kind of whomping their Johnsons, right? Like, you... <laughs> You got to put bands out there, which you've done. Bands, food from, I mean, I, you tell us, but it seems like every known restaurant in town is here. Yeah, that's, that's Sergio going through. Driving the cart and playing lead guitar as he's cruising, cruising right through the, the audience. <laughs> Very, cool. Um, Very cool. Yeah, it's, uh, hey, I, I'm so thankful to be doing what I'm doing. I'm so thankful for your guys' support. And you know what? I, I got to be honest. Like, this is like our Santa crawl that we do. This is one of my two or three favorite days of the year that I can't, I, I wake up like a kid in a candy store. I'm so excited to be part of it. And we're going to raise like 400 grand. And, and the reality is everybody's going to have literally as much fun as you can have playing golf. So right. it's a win-win all the way through all these, you know, John, I don't know if you saw it. We've got probably 20 of the young men that are coming through the program. They're out here working their ass off moving stuff around so it's not just these boys that are getting stuff out of this through the mentoring yeah, they're out here working too and helping out and they want to be part of it it's boys the men has changed their life forever and they want to give back yeah right on That's ernie awesome. hunt is with us we are at the fairbanks ranch country club today me and brown are here grande is back at home base um you're going to see all of this on television Somebody's tonight. shredding that guy is shredding he really is you're going to see all of this tonight on channel four that was the right time go yeah shredding's very good for you that's awesome right He's Nailed shredding it. all up on that junk. On my junk. Yeah, on that junk. That guitar is the junk. Killing that junk. Yeah. So you'll see it tonight on TV. You'll hear it all um, on YouTube. You'll see it on YouTube, all, all the different audio podcast platforms. Ernie. Um, Love it. I know you got a lot going on. Yeah. I know you got to get back to it. Um, I want to turn your attention from Boys to Men and Caddy Hack and Wonderfront. I want to yeah. turn your attention to something else. Okay. A lot of people watch Padre games. And they hit me up and they go, your boy Ernie Hahn sitting right behind home plate. They see you. Yeah. I know you got some strong opinions on what's happening because you're oh up boy. close and personal. What do you make I of just, what's going on? Right. John knows I did. I know oh, you. Buddy. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh boy. yeah, this is going to change the energy of this conversation. <laughs> what do you make of what is happening with the Padres post-trade situation? Well, I'm really, if you would ask me two days ago, it'd be very different. Very, <laughs> very, very excited about um, Josh Bell, by the way. Because <laughs> uh, he, 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 he water he fell off the Ooh. boat a couple of days ago, and he's getting his confidence back. And if this is going to do anything, they need him. Um, Soto's going to heat up. He's going to do it. He's still, what, he's 450 on base. He's been with us. So, mm -hmm. so he's getting on base. Manny's Manny. Uh, so it is what it is. Obviously, the heartbreak is just, and this goes back to Peter and the whole team there. I just, uh, well, I'll, this is perfect, perfect segue. Everybody's got crazy names of their teams today. Do you know what the name of our team is? Tell me. Tatis. Two wrong don't make a right, but three rights make a left. <laughs> Which is one of the famous quotes from Caddyhack. When he's talking, he goes, you know, judge, blah, blah, blah. But he goes, but, but he goes, but, you know, three rights make a left. <laughs> so, but we're saying the two wrongs don't make a right. And uh, I just cannot believe this guy. And he's let down this team in this city now twice. And I'll just go and tell you, it's what I think's wrong when you guarantee somebody that's 21 or 22 years old, 300 and something million dollars. Mm. I'm not saying it results with this, but if everybody played like every year was their option year, Joe Musgrove or anybody else, I think you find Aaron Judge. Everybody plays better. Mm -hmm. So what I would love, and I know it will never happen, is, hey, Max, you can make his $20 million on the cap, but put incentive base so I can make 60 this year if I really perform. And there'll be a lot of guys making close to 60 because when you give somebody that much money up front, right? what are you really playing for right. other than what you got inside? Right. And in some cases, we're, we're finding out maybe some people are a little bit more selfish than others. And – this guy's let down the city so far, so Big time. They, they have to deal with it. But I, I was there getting ready to watch Apple TV that night, and that thing oh. blurred across the screen. And I thought somebody was punking me because we were all getting excited to get him. Yeah. So um, oh. I hats off to Peter and the team for putting their money where their mouth is. Um, maybe this rallies the team. You know, sometimes this can be a team together. Do they have enough juice? I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen a team like the Dodgers and – Sometime forever. Look, look, Denunzio just showed up. Nice. It's Ralston. Nice. I see the talk of Denunzio. Nice. What's up, brother? So, dude, that's, right, I'm with you. Look at this good looking kid right here. Look at my man right there. So, awesome. uh, who knows? I think there's going to be very interesting conversations in the offseason. What's going on? The contract, the motorcycle accident. Obviously. Which one, as he likes yeah. to say? Wh which one? And, and by the way, pretty sure. The Major League Baseball didn't kick our boy out. The poster boy of Major League Baseball. Last thing they want to do is this guy not be yeah. on over right. over right. too much ring room medicine. Pretty yeah. sure that wasn't it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. Well, that's just it. And then his yeah, father. That's a lot made, of that's a lot of ring room medicine. So a lot yeah. of ring you got to lather yourself up. Right. You got to have ringworm ring throughout room your sour. whole body. Right. It's a it's a bath of ringworm. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Um. Last thing before you go. So where are you at? Where's your heart at right now, Chargers wise? Because I know that it's hard. For some people, some people get pulled back in. Uh, hey, it's okay. Uh, say you I, say you're back. He's he's on. I'm back. The herbal no, no, I'm I'm uh, I I, uh, I root for the quarterback. As I like to say in the end, I want the quarterback to throw for 550 yards. I want him to have six or seven touchdowns, <laughs> break every possible record, and I want them to lose on the last play of the game. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. yes. I love that. Oh. Chats being. That's, that's honest. That, that's honest. Yeah. I mean, that's not, I mean they're, they're not our team anymore. Right. And if they came back here in a heartbeat, I would do everything in the world. In fact, I'm just going to throw this out there. At some point, when that does happen, I, I would do everything in my power and all my relationships to try to get them back here with the right ownership group because they belong back in San Diego. Because you know what? They were loved in San Diego. Mm -hmm. They're still loved in San Diego for so many ways. But right now, they're not a San Diego team. They're an yeah. L.A. team. Yeah. And um, listen, I know this past weekend, they had that uh, scrimmage game down at, at Snapdragon. Yeah. Which looks like a really, really nice mid-level college football stadium. I'm sure it's awesome. I'm sure the technology is awesome. All the sight lines look great. And frankly, I can't wait to go. However, 
Don't ever tell me that you're adding to that stadium no, and building an NFL. Stop it. Forget it. Stop it. Stop that. Stop it. Nonsense. That's a lie. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, but you know what? Here's here's what I would say. There's enough money out there right now, guys. And you saw it with the Clippers, and they just one day decided they build their own arena. Yep. There's enough money now that our job should be when this team does come up, and it will come up at some point. How do we get it back to San yeah, Diego? How do we, that's, how do we buy that's what I look at. It. Yeah, I know. And whether what? it's talking to friends that you and I yeah, both know and others, right. there's enough money in this world to get the whale involved, the rest of the community involved. And so I, in the past, I would have said, you're crazy. So it's $6 billion for a stadium and a team or $7 billion. We don't have it collectively, the three of us. Well, I can't speak for the two of you. I know I don't have it. Yeah, Please don't speak for me. I ain't got no to... mirror on my drive. But you know side. what? There are people that do have it. Right. Our job is that team comes back to San Diego. I will do everything in my power to do to make it great. Let me just say this. We got to hustle and hit this break. Yeah. Ernie Hahn, Caddy Hack, boys to men, unbelievable. So glad to be out here today. Congratulations yeah, to you, man. This you, is awesome, dude. It's, it's a great day for really all boys is. and men, and thank you for being here. Oh, dude, thank it's you our for pleasure. Having us. Stick around, everybody. We got a lot more to get to from Caddy Hack. Ernie Han, we appreciate you. We're back in a second. This is this is Kaplan and Crew. Stick Did you forget? around, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. The Rich Eisen Show airs Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. An engaging blend of insightful football expertise with an offbeat mix of humor and pop culture while continuing to attract the most recognizable names in sports and entertainment. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. The 2022 San Diego Loyal season continues live on your view and your view.com. Watch the San Diego Loyal host the Oakland Roots SC Wednesday, August 24th at 7 p.m. Come join us at Torero Stadium and support the San Diego Loyal as they continue their bid for the 2022 USL Championship. Tickets are available. San Diego Loyal versus the Oakland Roots SC Wednesday, August 24th on your view. tax attorney Adam Brewer. 
If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60 second timeout with Haley Stasiak. It's time for some San Diego Loyal Soccer Club updates. The Loyal got their first ever win in Texas on Saturday against the El Paso Locomotive. Kyle Vassell got the scoring started for the Loyal with a goal in the 18th minute. Vassell has scored 12 goals this season, which is a career best. Thomas Amang extended the Loyal's lead with a goal in the 43rd minute. El Paso found the net in the 70th minute, but Evan Conway was able to secure the win with a goal shortly after getting San Diego the 3-1 victory. The Loyal have now won six of their last seven matches. They still sit at second in the Western Conference behind San Antonio FC. San Diego next takes on the Oakland Roots on Wednesday. That's your 60-second timeout. Now back to more. Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60-second timeout is presented by Your View. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and Your View, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. What's going on to all the great friends that watch the show on television here on Cox Your View? What you're about to see will never be heard on radio, won't be seen on YouTube, no audio podcast. This is just for you here on Cox Your View. Hey to all the great friends out there that watch on Cox Your View. You might be in San Diego, Orange County, L.A., Santa Barbara. We're happy to have everybody here. What we love to do in this time is it's a Cox exclusive. This is stuff you're only going to see here on Cox. Not going to hear this on radio on 1090. Not going to see it on our YouTube channel. Not going to hear it on any of the audio podcast platforms. This is just for you guys that watch on Cox Your View. A really big show coming to the Scottish Rights Event Center in Mission Valley in San Diego. If you love trading sports memorabilia or buying or selling, this is going to be the place for you. It's coming up on August 6th and 7th. And here's the guy running the entire operation. Here's Joe Oliveri, known to his friends as Joe O from SD Collectibles, who's running this show. Hey, Joe, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Scott. Always a pleasure. Yeah, my, my pleasure, man. Let, let's talk about this. Um, tell us about why people need to know about your show, SD Collectibles, on August 6th and 7th. Well, we have a great show coming up August 6th and 7th as a, at the Scottish Rite Event Center, like you had mentioned, right there in Mission Valley. We have over 130 tables that will be at this show. We also have Paul Lowe signing autographs on Saturday. We have Steve Garvey and Raleigh Fingers, which will be there on Sunday doing in-person autographs. We just have a really great collection of some of the biggest and best of the hall of the community, the card collecting community coming out there August 6th and 7th, showing their cards, showing their collectibles. There'll be a lot of memorabilia out there. And really what we look at it as is something for every collector. Yeah, when you say every collector, is it, it from what I understand and looking at the website sdcollectibles.com, it's not just purely sports cards. Is that right? That's correct, Scott. We have sports cards, memorabilia, autographed items, quite a few unique autographed items and memorabilia. But we also have Pokemon, a large selection of Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering. There'll be vendors there that have comic books. As I mentioned, there are several autograph signers that will be there. We also have JSA, which will be on site for both Saturday and Sunday doing in-person authentication, same-day services. 
Well, that's awesome because for me, the one thing I know I'm most, most interested in, and I know a lot of people who are watching right now have the same thing. If you've got a piece of sports memorabilia that you um, are willing to part with, but you don't have authentication, like I have this Marshall Falk football, the year that he broke uh, the record where he was over a thousand yards rushing and receiving for the Rams in 2000. I've also got this basketball sitting right here that is signed by every Los Angeles Laker of the 2002 world championship team. So Shaq, Kobe, Phil Jackson, I don't, really honestly know if they're authentic. I think they are. It's just, I don't have the paperwork so I can bring this stuff to your show and get it authenticated on site. Is that right? That's correct. You can bring your, your autographed items, whether it's memorabilia, such as those basketballs, footballs, baseballs, bats, cards, photos. You can bring them right to the show Saturday or Sunday. Stop by the JSA booth. Chris would be happy to help you there. He'll be on site with his team and they can authenticate different items that you have that have autographs so that you can find out one, if it's real and two, it just gives it that much more value when it is authenticated. What if I get it authenticated and I want to sell it? Is there a way for a private person like myself? I say private. I mean, like, you know, I'm not in the business. Can I sell this stuff? Yeah, you sure can. There's a couple different ways to do that. I mean, obviously, there's some online ways to do that that take a lot of time and, and a whole different set of really procedures. But one of the great things that you can do, we have tables available and we have options for everyone. We do have some vendor tables available, six, eight and 12 foot tables. You can bring your items down there to sell. Uh, you can bring your cards, your memorabilia, and so on. If you have some memorabilia items like you're showing there, Scott, you can get them authenticated right at JSA, bring them over to your table, and you can put them out there for all of the attendees to see and uh, see if you can make a deal on selling it or possibly trading it for something that you have a little more interest in. All right. Well, while you're talking, I know Alex is putting up on the screen for everybody, the website, it's sdcollectibles.com, sdcollectibles.com, information about where, when, who's going to be there signing autographs, how you can get authenticated, how you can buy a table and space if you want to sell your own collection. Uh, Joe, this is going to be a fun show. This is going to be really cool. Uh, give us any uh, final thoughts, things you need people to know before you roll. Well, one of the great things is it's a family friendly event. When you come to our shows, you'll see a lot of people, both the parents and the kids showing them around because there's something for everyone. There's bargain boxes of cards that are anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar up. And then if you're one of those bigger collectors that likes to find those unique cards, maybe those graded cards, those gem mint 10, there's going to be thousands and thousands of those on display, as well as what's called the trading card game, the TCG with Pokey, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, and so on, comic books, as I mentioned, autograph memorabilia and such. You know, if I could give a special thank you to some of those in our community that have helped support our event, Stacked Packs, big supporter and sponsor of our event, uh, Pokey Familia, J-Lo Collectibles, SD Sports Mem, and OC Dugout. Those those folks really helped support our event and they'll be at the show. So if you have an opportunity to come out and attend, come by and, and say hello to those folks that have vendor tables set up. Joe, it sounds like it's going to be a great event on August 6th and 7th. The website is SD Collectibles and we'll see you down there. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. The NFL lives here. If it's about the NFL, you found the right station. Join 1090 every Sunday during the NFL season for the exclusive SoCal home of not one, but two NFL games every Sunday during the season on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of California, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Home of Guiding Hands helps San Diego community in that we're a resource for families. A lot of times when families first identify that their child, their loved one, might have an intellectual or developmental disabilities, they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. And we're here to help guide people through that process, to show them what a thriving life their loved one can have. Uh, it's a passion I share having a daughter with a disability. 
I really love the place that I live at. Because of Home of Guiding Hands, I was able to move out of my parents' house and into a beautiful home that I love living in. And so like if you have an independent living service coordinator, they will help you like learn more about being independent and they help guide you through different things. They've helped me with um, lots of encouragement and love. Um, they've also given me an ILS worker who is an amazing person and I love her so much. She's great. I could tell you the first, I think week or so, I wasn't feeling very confident in myself. The first couple of nights I was like, oh, this is scary. But I look back on it now and I'm like, this is so easy. Main Street Living celebrates diverse abilities in partnership with Home of Guiding Hands, supporting the special needs community for over 55 years. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Imagine life without compromise. You want mountains? Check. How about some golf? Check. Plus hiking trails, sports courts, and so much more. We explore the beautiful community of Estrella today on Su Vida. Vida. Look at that beautiful pond. Estrella, stars. I feel right at home. Hey. High five. Yeah.